Hey, welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. I'm your host, Jeff Hutzel. As you guys know, Tech Talk is a show we talk to IT leaders and subject matter experts, really about all areas of technology, interesting things their companies are doing, and also talk about current events and some of the stuff that's happening in the space. Uh, we've always got terrific guests on the show. Uh, today, we are really excited to have Eric Hansen with Husco. Eric is the Global VP of Information Technology with the company. Eric, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jeff, and nice to talk to you again. Yeah. So, Eric, for folks that are not familiar with Husco, maybe just from the beginning, talk a little bit about the company and kind of what you guys do. Yeah, Husco is an engineering and manufacturing organization. We make uh, products for the automotive and off-highway industries, so off-highway meaning construction and agriculture. Uh, we make hydraulic and electrohydraulic components. If you are driving a car down the road, uh, you likely have Husco products in it. Uh, we are best known for uh, really the innovative uh, boutique approach we take to our business and for the organization's uh, philanthropy. That's great. So as we're talking to this, and we chatted a little bit before the show, um, kind of about everything that's going on and, and all kind of the craziness of the world right now and, and how that's really changed and affected your role as an IT leader within the organization. I'm, I'm really curious to get your perspective on just what that's looked like over the last couple of months and kind of where you started and your vision of what 2020 was going to be and kind of where things are today and how you guys have had to adapt over the past few months? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it has been very fluid over the last few months. Um, I think it is interesting, however, you know, IT it, these days is so immersive uh, in the business already. But when the pandemic hit and, and we had to on a dime, turn our organization into a remote organization. We had to figure out how to do business in a world of significantly reduced travel or no travel. Um, the appreciation for what IT has done to prepare for this time period, uh, even though you didn't, you don't necessarily plan for specific pandemics. Um, our readiness to take the organization to um, uh, a remote capability. Uh, and do it pretty seamlessly has really been appreciated. Yeah, I guess that's the one thing, right? If this would have happened 15, 20 years ago, I can't can't imagine what, what business would look like and the impact it would be. I mean, it's bad enough as it is now, but I think if it was ever going to happen, we're probably in about as good a time to, to adapt and evolve with it uh, as you can think of now. So as you're having conversations internally with your management team, you know, that's always the, the rub in a lot of cases as well. IT doesn't necessarily always have a seat at the table with management. Sometimes they're viewed as the the guys that just keep the keep the lights on and keep everything running, and maybe they're um, just an expense to the business. It seems like that's changing a lot. Uh, how is that within within your organization? You know, those conversations you have with the business and their IT leaders. What has that been like as well? Yeah, yeah, it's it's really actually picked up um, versus dropped off during this time. Everyone's been really busy, and you know, we're we're affected economically by the the global downturn. Um, and so uh, making sure that we maintain a growth mindset and still you know, keep the business running and profitable during this, this tough period of time. Um, however, we are taking this opportunity to look at, you know, how can we reimagine our business um, with some of the learnings that we've had over the last few months? So I just, for example, uh, over the last two weeks, finished a number of stakeholder interviews where we talked about um, this new world we live in where remote work is much more acceptable. Um, we were a pretty traditional kind of butts in the seat company prior, um, like a lot of uh, probably traditional manufacturing organizations. And our entire, you know, really perspective on this is, is dramatically changed. And then, you know, of course, now we've looked at our effectiveness of being able to, to conduct business and secure new business and, and operate our, our global organization with reduced travel. And so we've we just again concluded some conversations on, you know, what collaboration tools have really worked well. What should we investigate in uh, and invest in? Uh, what process automation or, um, or analytical insights might we need to to look at further? And so, it's really again with this kind of, I think, new um, appreciation for the role IT is playing in the organization, um, increase the intensity and the frequency of of business conversation and, and that seat at the table. Yeah, I'm, and I'm curious, you know, from an investment standpoint, what are, what are kind of the one or two biggest investments you guys have made that have really paid off big dividends 
um, over the past few months and kind of as we've seen this change in the shift. Yeah, in terms of historical investment, what was really critical for our success over the last few months is our investment in cloud. And uh, we have, like a lot of companies, become a, a cloud-first organization. And, um, and and the ubiquitous nature and the and the ability to access cloud applications from anywhere was critically important to our, our shift to remote work. Um, but along with that, I would say our... Um, our desire and our need to reimagine our data center, not as a physical location, but an end-to-end -end capability to ensure that we had high performance and stable connectivity no matter where people were at or what systems they were using inside the building or outside was really pretty critical to our success as well. Yeah, and you guys have migrated, moved towards more of an SD-WAN type approach from a network environment, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, we did. I mean, we... We learned this the hard way, like like many things in life. Um, you know, as we made our shift to cloud, you know, we had kind of kept this legacy, I would say, thinking around our our connectivity. So we had, um, like a lot of companies, you know, an MPLS network that connected our offices. We had internet connectivity, um, but we were experiencing more and more um, business impacting outages. And we just weren't getting the right kind of performance for uh, our, our cloud applications. And so, you know, we um, chose a, a fully managed service offering from a company called Ariaka uh, last year. Uh, we were able to implement and um, replace all of our, our network uh, with uh, redundant internet, uh, high performance internet at all sites. And um, really knock that out in a cost neutral way. Just a few months very important to our ability to to leverage the cloud investment that we've made. Yeah, it sounds like that's giving you guys a lot more flexibility as well as some reliability in there as well. How about from a from a management standpoint? You know, most teams usually have a, a whole team that's set managing the network and kind of watching for circuits going up and down and, and kind of doing the reparations on that. Has that changed at all with this new uh, new deployment you guys have done with Ariaka? It has, and that was um, actually an unexpected outcome from that change. But Ariaka has done such a, a wonderful job managing the WAN and uh, and the internet, which is now kind of uh, one conjoined entity, um, that we have um, really outsourced our data networking team now fully. Uh, we just didn't have a need for on-site people anymore, and so we have Ariaka handling all of our um, our, our WAN. And we have a whole organization, our LAN, uh, in an outsourced manner. And we're able to do that for uh, really at a cost savings, and um, it's been quite effective. That's great. So, Eric, talk to me just going forward. Kind of advice you would give to other IT leaders in their approach? You know, is, is this everything evolves, and we keep hoping there's a post-COVID world. Maybe it's just kind of the, the quote-unquote new normal that will go from here. Um, but any advice you would give to a fellow IT leader that's kind of saying, hey, you know, what do we do from here? What should our approach be? How do we prioritize things for, for going forward in the second half of 2020? Any advice you would give? Yeah, I, I would say really listen to the business for one. Um, and, and not just listen, but uh, the world we live in today, the innovation that's coming at us is so fast. Keep educating. Uh, inform them of what is possible and then, and then listen to what they need and you know, don't be that monolithic IT organization. Be really ready to pivot and move quickly to meet your organization's most critical needs. No, that's great. Eric, I love these conversations, Eric. We always seem to pick up a couple of really great nuggets every time you and I chat. Um, for folks that want to connect with you and chat with you, where is the best place they can go to contact you and learn more about Husco and, and connect with you as well? Yeah, great question. Uh, so... Uh, probably LinkedIn. I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. Um, you'll be able to find me there and um, just search for my name and, and Husco is probably the easiest way. Feel free to direct message me there and then we can um, uh, move the conversation to email or the phone. And then for Husco, you can learn more about Husco at just www.husco.com. All right. Great. Well, Eric, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you for all the insights. It's great to have you as part of our uh, IT community. Thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure as always. All right, you got it. And thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Tech Talk. We'll catch you next time.